Hello and welcome to another Beers with a Minor audio blog. Just you and me. I am Mad Mumsy and this is the Beers with a Minor podcast. I've been driving huge dump trucks in open cut mines for over 10 years now and I'm always asked the same questions. How does a little thing like you drive those big trucks? Oh, you must be rich. How do I get a job doing that? Not everyone is cut out to be a miner, but why not? What is it really like and what does it take to thrive and survive in this industry? Now sit back, relax, and let's hang out together in another audio blog. Hello and welcome to episode 73 of the Beers with the Miner podcast. This one is a little bit different. <gasps> What are you doing, Mad Mumsy? <laughs> it's an audio blog. It's also a re-release. And after I did episode 72 with Rick Peterson, I went back and listened to episode 9 about what makes a real minor. And I just heard the end of it. And it was very interesting to me, hopefully to you as well, <laughs> about all the inquiries that were going on in mining and you'll hear them here because I'll keep that part of it in. I'm editing some of it out and I did record this in 2016 and I'm just mortified really that they were having an inquiry into labour hire and all the changes that needed to happen and really nothing has changed. It's August 2020 and I have been watching most days, I even have an alarm set <laughs> because I work from home now and so I can, I have been watching the live stream of another inquiry in Queensland here about gas emissions in the mines and I'm watching mines inspectors, safety reps, general managers and all sorts of people getting the drill under the pump, getting questioned and it's being live streamed. I think the live streams are really mostly happening because of COVID, but I'm not sure if they usually always are, and I've only just discovered that. <laughs> but I did share a link to the inquiry on my Mad Mumsy Facebook page, which, of course, I know you follow. <laughs> if not, head there, M-U-M-Z-I-E, to find a Mad Mumsy but the reason I thought I'd re-release this is mostly about that, I think, at the end. And also for people who perhaps you've just started in the mining industry or you're an old timer listening in, just to revisit all of the people that are working away from home, away from their families and doing all the things. Oh, look, there's a train. You know what that means? I'm home. Hang on, I'll have another drink. There's another train. Ha! Oh my God, there's two. That's crazy. The other point I would like to make is from watching these inquiries, how important your paperwork is. It is a document that can be held up in court and that is exactly what they're doing. They're saying this might not be the right date, what happened there? Well, you know, we were rushed or uh, it's fascinating. And I must say it's a little bit, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure of the right word, sadistic perhaps, but to watch the people that would usually be questioning us out in the field to be under the pump on TV. And I know that I struggled when, oh, God, I used to shit myself. <laughs> Whenever they say the mines inspectors are coming to site because they're not uh, random, which I believe they should be. And oh, don't go off track, Mad Mumsy. I'll get back to that about the randomness because they kind of are, but we just don't know about them. So you'd know there's some big kahunas are coming out on site and a mines inspector or someone, you know, from overseas who is one of the big managers or something from the company and they just might happen to pull you over and 
jump in your truck. Like, holy shit. And they're going to ask you questions about what their, not their motto, what is it, what their, each, each company has a very special, <sighs> there's words, Mad Mumsy, what are they? The rules or the, the, not the, ma- the mantra, the, you know, what they want, it, want <laughs> what the company is about and the philosophy and the values, that's the word. <laughs> ah, you clown. So they want you to be able to sprout off the company values to the big kahuna. And also, if it's a mines inspector, they'll ask you heaps of questions and they might even ask you about the Mining Act and that's what's come out from this inquiry that I've been watching is, you know, um, that a lot of the people don't know about the Mining Act. Well, freaking hell, it's very long. I thought you only need to know it all if you want to pass the sitting of becoming an OCE, for example, you know. So... There's that. But know about your bits. I'm not trying to degrade, downgrade it at all, the importance, but know about your bits of it, what's important in your work area and what you do. But what I, the message I would like to get across, especially to my newbies, is that it's a very, very, very important business. And if shit goes to shit... Or even if it kind of goes to shit and you're on the edge of it, you could end up being live streamed across Australia in an inquiry. I have noticed that some of them have a, I think they called it a stat deck. So it's like a written submission and then they go back to paragraph 9.9.111 and there's an operator in the place where they are. It's like a court. I don't think it's a court like proper but it feels like it so there's an operator in there and it must be a man because they keep calling him him um if he could just go to document so and so in this paragraph and then they put it across all the screens of all the people that are lined up in there and then on the screen the big screens within and then also on the live stream and then also for the person who's getting absolutely drilled and some of them are really good and some of them start off good and then they they might go well under one lot of questioning but there's about six different people that could ask you questions so you think that it's over and then they say, okay, do you want it? No questions, no questions, no questions. Yes, I have some questions. We'll go back to paragraph nine and you think, ooh, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on there? And so I have this on on my phone while I'm working on my computer and I've got the ABC Channel 24, you know, the news channel on, turned down as well, waiting for all the premiers to come on and tell us all the wonderful COVID news, hopefully some good news, a little bit of Trump news. I'm a bit fascinated about that as well. And the other interesting thing is they are touching a lot with nearly everyone they talk to about the contractor labour hire situation. People that are asking the questions are tr- seem like they're separating them, whereas to me, contract, labour hire, you know, like you're not permanent, right? Um, so they ask, are they all lumped into one? Are they seen as being the same? Do you think that they are speaking up or are they worried about their position and there's been quite a few people that have said yes I think they're worried about their position and they can just get taken to the gate and then they ask for examples and he said well I can't actually think of any examples so um it's still happening is my point the labor hire and the government are still looking into it and it's four years later but this one is about the gas because sadly we had the explosion at Grosvenor where five coal mine workers were very, very badly injured and I just heard recently from someone who is connected to a couple of them and they're not real good. They're not real flash, mate. And um, we're so lucky that none of them 
died and we didn't have to do another Steel Cap Sisters hashtag one minute for our lost miners and add another candle and a hard hat to my picture. But they're still suffering and we don't need that anymore. And so hopefully this inquiry will, I don't know, it seems to be all about the paperwork. But it's they're looking at preventative and what methods have they got to get the gas to escape and um, different things that they're trying. So if you're interested, you can go and watch it live or you can watch the, if you miss out, you can watch the, you know, like just scrub it back and watch it all. Or you might be sitting there going, as if I'd want to fucking listen to that. Actually, the real miner was like that because... There was someone of interest because he is underground. This is about underground explosions. And I thought he might like to listen and he listened for a bit and said, no, I listen to that sort of shit at work all day. And it's true. You don't want to hear it anymore, you know. I was like that with my two-way in the car. I turn off sometimes because I've been listening to the freaking two-way for a week and clowns rabbiting on and two two ways in some band camps but now that I'm working from home at the moment I kind of miss it and so I've got my two way on and I'm listening to the truckies and every now and again I get that random friendly I think oh what's going on what's going on and it's fascinating so anyway I shall stop but I would love for you to re-listen to this episode and Think about the people that you work with on site as I talk about, especially your cleaners, your bus drivers, people in the kitchen, the people that sign you in in the office and that, you know. Are they real miners? Do you think they're real miners? Does it matter? They're out there. They're away from home. We're all in this together and especially at the moment with COVID, can you imagine what they're having to go through to try and keep everyone safe? So please... Have a listen and, yeah, you'll hear my rant at the end about all the inquiries and that was four years ago, man. And they're still having inquiries. Shit's got to change. Like, come on, put people on. Give people shirts, give them holidays, give them sickies, have everyone on the same hourly rate and uniforms. I think that is one thing that has changed since I did that article that article because I was an article for Shift Miner that I read and then had a rant about after and um, back then we didn't have, uh, we weren't getting an allocation every year or we didn't get jeans and boots but that has since changed. You only really got shirts and jacket if you're lucky but um, that's changed. Well, it should have, and if it hasn't where you are, do something about it. Who you work for has to supply your PPE, okay? All right, enjoy this episode. I know it's a rerun, but it just felt right, you know? I was sitting outside listening to it under the stars with wine in my hand, (laughs) and I thought, I'm going to share this again. And then it started me thinking about the current inquiries that I'm already watching, so... The show notes for this can be found at madmumsy.com forward slash beers73, the number 73, and I'll leave a link to the inquiry where you can watch it in there. Okay, cheers. Let's dig in, get it? Dig mining. <laughs> oh, my God, I even did that in episode nine. I'll leave it in. I sound so stiff. Now I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just ran to the out, hey. Okay, cheers. Now for a word from our sponsor, Julia Hartman and the Bantax Accounting Group. Julia's my awesome accountant. She's written two books with financial expert Noel Whitaker, and she's got a passion to help us miners make the most out of our hard earned cash. She's got heaps of tips and make sure that we get every cent we are meant to get and is right on the ball with everything. If you head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners, that's B-A-N-T-A-C-S, you can download a free booklet 
all just for us miners. And there's also a spreadsheet in there that helps you check off what tools you have for your trade, like your isolation lock, work boots, seven shirts, all of these sorts of things. And you can weigh them up and it'll tell you if you qualify weight-wise to claim your trips out to work. And that's just one of the things that they've got over there. So I strongly urge you to head to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and see what they can do and find your nearest office as we come up to tax time. They're really on the ball, know what's going on with the tax department and there's heaps of other free information like property investing. If you really plan on doing some great things with your money, you want to do that, right? If you want to sell your house, can save a lot of money if you find out what to do first rather than in hindsight. And Julia, she'll, you know, make sure you get it right. And if you do it wrong and then go and see her, she'll <laughs> she'll up you <laughs> in the nicest possible way because she really cares about us and wants us to keep our money and not give it to the tax department. Anyway, head over to bantax.com.au forward slash miners and tell them Mad Mumsy sent you. Today, in Episode 9, I cover what makes a real miner, and does it even matter? Some people get so hung up on this like my partner, a real miner. It is because of him I chose to put pen to paper and share a few thoughts on this. You may agree with him, or like me, <laughs> have two bob each way. Let's, as I like to say, dig in. Get it? Dig? Mining? <laughs> oh, I crack me up. Are gravel scratchers real miners? I have worked as an operator in gold and coal mines for over a decade now, sometimes carting dirt and rock, sometimes coal or gold and copper. The money makers. I am a miner, but am I a real miner? My partner is a real miner. Just ask him. He'll tell you. I thought we were all real miners. What is the difference? You work in a mine. You're a real miner right? The Oxford Dictionary describes a miner as anyone who works in a mine, but there is no definition for a real miner. When I met my partner, an underground miner, he started calling me a gravel scratcher. You gravelies are all the same. This was a new term to me, but quite well known, apparently. It reminded me of when I first heard the endearing term Boneheads, dump truck operators, even if I spend all day grading on the loader or driving a truck in the black stuff, I'm still only a gravel scratcher, not a real miner, in his opinion. As our time together increases, I learn more of this strange new world of underground mining. He never used to say much except, I hate work. Personally, I have rarely hated work choosing instead to have bad days here and there, but I'm a little bit mad. A few years ago, I worked with an older fella who would sigh heavily every time we approached the pit in our bus. I really don't want to be here. Every day, the same heaviness in his heart. And every day I would say, oh, you'll be right once you're in the dozer. I may feel the same after 30 plus years in mining. For now, I tend to find the lighter moments to help us all get through it. The first time my partner came to visit me on his pyjama day, I got him some crib from my mess. I usually don't eat much, so I didn't feel too guilty taking extra pies and sandwiches for him to toast on his night shift. This was my first eye-opener of working underground. He thanked me for my effort, but let it slip about eating cold pies for crib. I told him not to be silly, just put them in the pie warmer when you get to work and they'll be hot by first crib. <laughs> Jeez, it's not rocket science. The sandwiches will be yummy in the toasted sandwich maker with a cuppa too. See how I look after you? That was when I first heard him say, we are real miners. We don't have all that. What, not even a kettle? No. Why not? They should let you, that's so mean. Turns out it's because of the boom factor, not the mining boom and bust and they can't afford new appliances, 
but nothing that might create a spark. (laughs) Makes sense, really, but gee, no kettle? That is real mining. They have a few tricks up their sleeve, such as putting things on the transformer to warm them up. (laughs) Whatever that is. They are in the black stuff all the time and most need to have a shower before leaving work because they are real miners and get dirty. Even after a shower, many look cool and mysterious with their eyeliner on. I must admit, I have worn my work jeans a couple of days in a row because they are still fresh and clean. (laughs) But don't tell him that. Is it more than just open cut versus underground? What about the differences between temps, contractors, old-timers, clean skins and traineeships? Does being permanent make you any more of a real miner? There can be many differences depending on your experience and employment agreements, which mine you work at and who runs it. Permanent employees get holidays and sickies. In most cases, more money too. You are supplied work boots, shirts and jeans yearly and a jacket every two years. Better accommodation with a more permanent residence or even a company house in town. The banks are more inclined to give you a loan because you are seen as being in stable employment with regular pay cycles. When it rains, you stay or are offered the option of annual leave. More training on various equipment, becoming a trainer and more incentive to increase your skill levels in general. Of course, all of this differs from company to company, site to site and your position. However, even these standards are being eroded with the downturn in the industry at the moment. Attempts and contractors. Labour hire. No holiday or sick leave. If you are not at work, you get no pay. Most labour hire places these days seem to only provide a few shirts and perhaps a jacket. You must supply your own boots and jeans. At least they should be tax deductible. Hoteling is the new accommodation catch cry. Bring everything with you, every trip. No shared or permanent dongers. You pay for your accommodation and meals out of your wages. Try getting a loan for a house as a contractor. Many banks won't touch you or want to see you have been there for years. When it rains, many companies now will send home the contractors. If you're lucky, they may give you four hours pay. Little or no training time is given, including not being authorised to operate equipment that you have prior competencies for. Again, this varies from site to site. So if you have the company shirt on in the company camp and get holidays, Does that make you any more of a real miner than the others? Some mine workers sadly think they are a bit more special than the others. Times have changed with discrimination laws, etc., but it's becoming nicer now than it used to be, in my view anyway. The increased popularity of contract labour hire, many crews are now outnumbered by contractors. If you're a chef or a cleaner, does that make you a miner? A popular morning TV show were promoting a story involving a miner. I was watching this with my real miner, and he was horrified to hear that this guy was a chef at a camp. In his view, that does not make you a miner. You're a chef working within the mining industry. This goes for cleaners and all support roles. In his view, I asked him what about the cleaners who go out to the mines and clean the offices and the crew parts? They are still cleaners, not bloody miners. As I write this, I'm not quite sure where I sit. Hmm, perhaps on the fence. As an operator, I feel like it's the peeps who actually go to the mine, blow up the dirt, dig it out and get it onto the train and trucks. But where does the line stop? What about all the office jocks, the surveyors and planners, the training and induction departments, security at the gate? the cleaners. I think we all contribute to the overall running of the mine and most are working away from friends and family. Therefore, if you work within the mining industry, I will call you a miner. But a little voice will say, yeah, but as a not a real miner. Is that right or wrong in this politically correct crazy world? 
The real miner is in the background yelling out, no, 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 as I read this out to him. In my view, we are all real miners, working long hours away from family and friends in dangerous conditions with uncertain times ahead. It doesn't matter who does what or what we call each other. Or what is your view? Are you a real miner? Or like me, according to my partner, just doing preparation work for the real miners to come in? Perhaps you work within the mining industry and feel every part of miner as we do. Let's just get the job done, safely, with a little fun popped in for sanity, and get home to our other life when we can. Now I'm off to pack for night shift because I am a real miner. Hmm, what about people who only do day shift? Are they real miners? I wrote that article in 2014, I believe, but many of those issues are still quite valid And when I wrote that article, I was a little bit apprehensive about putting it out there and then going to camp and seeing all the chefs and the cleaners and feeling like I had degraded them in some way. And I still feel a little bit like that. I truly honour what we are all doing. And we're hard workers. We, as I said, we work in the mining industry and We all just have to watch out for each other and try and get each other through it, no matter what you do out there, and respect each other. No, I really do my best to try and, and I'm not doing it just to make myself feel better. I don't think. I've never really analysed why. (laughs) But, you know, try and thank the people that are helping you while you are in camp, the people cleaning your room, the people doing your dishes, the people who are cooking your food, the people who are checking you into your room and out, the people who are driving you on the bus, they're all in our industry as well and every part a minor as we are. We're just doing different things, I believe. And I say we, coming from obviously, as I always say, mad mumsy dump truck operator in an open cut mine. But my partner is an underground miner and I regularly have tea with his peeps and it's funny talking to them and hearing more and more about their world. I just wanted to read that out and bring it up again because at the moment the Queensland Government, it's May 2016 as I record this and they have had submissions open about labour hire contracting in, I believe, mining and construction, but across the board. And I'm not sure I'm not sure what they're going to what's going to come out of it. I did make a submission. It will be interesting to see what comes from a government inquiry into this. And they asked what you what you wished for and, you know, speaking to a lot of people about this, it'd be nice if we were all on the same hourly rate and if we got holidays and sick days and if you're going to get sacked or put off or let go however they wish to describe it that we got two weeks notice or a week a day (laughs) two weeks you know like most people on the planet it's it's all those little things that add up and make it make it harder and I I come from the position I've started as labor hire ended up with a shirt as they say uh permanent And that was so much better because I knew how much I was going to get paid every week. At the moment, I get a three-day pay, a two-day pay, if I don't go, a no pay, (laughs) so I don't get sick. But um, this inquiry will be interesting to see what comes from it. And I can understand that this is quite a political subject and the big mining companies, sure, it's more in their interest to be able to have a more fluid perhaps might be the word or not, uh, workforce where they can hire people quickly and get rid of them quickly depending on the demand. And at the moment the demand for our resources is still not very nice, not very nice, pretty. That's not very financial, is it? (laughs) But the resources sector is struggling and it's affecting the whole country because it's a lot of money that's not coming in. So I'm not going to go into all of that because I'm not sure that I really know enough about it. But 
I do know that they are having an inquiry and at the end when you add a submission it said, if you were Prime Minister, what would you do? And my wish would be same hourly rate, sickies and holidays. You know, you could go on and ask for heaps more but I think that would that would be nice. So it'll be very interesting to see what comes from the inquiry. I'll add links to it in the show notes once it begins. At the moment they just opened it up for submissions and they've been they have they are closed now. It's like the FIFO inquiries in WA into mental health. Big changes have come from that. And then we had the Queensland government had the FIFO inquiry as well but that was more along the lines of 100 percent fly in fly out when there are workers in the town next door who can't get a job there because you have to go and live in the big city i can understand that they want to share the love around the state but you know that was just a bit ridiculous in i'll just say this and then rant over but in my view for that it should be a choice. If you want to live in the local town, if you want to drive in, if you want to catch the bus or if you want to have get on a plane and live in a big city, you, I think you should be able to do either of those. That's my biggest thing about fly in, fly out. It shouldn't be compulsory and you have to move to Brisbane to get a job in a mine five kilometres from your local town in the central Queensland, which is exactly what was happening. So, again, I'm trying not to be political, but you can't just keep everyone happy. What's the point of making a making a podcast or being a blogger? You know, I don't want to uh, get anyone in trouble, <laughs> including myself, but I think these are the sort of things that we're discussing at the Coop Arts and in meetings, and I'm sure big uh, companies are discussing these sorts of things all the time as well, as well as government. So, you know, just putting it out there and any feedback would be most welcome, of course. That's it. Political rant over (laughs) for the day. Thank you so much for listening. Until next week, stay safe, be real, be special and have fun. For we only live once. Cheers. Cheers.